Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 22, verses 34 through 40. Hear these words. When the Pharisees heard that he had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Our second scripture reading comes from 1 John chapter 4, verse 7 and 8. Beloved, let us love one another, because love is from God. Everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, for God is love. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. In our church, we are encouraged to wear name tags. This simple name tag may not seem useful, but it actually does many things. As some of you may remember, I attended our church's service as a visitor for about eight months. Back then, I had no idea that I would be one of the pastors here and preach like today. During that time, name tags were truly helpful in connecting with people. When a member greeted me, I could naturally match the name to the face. And even though I forgot that person's name, I didn't have to worry too much about reconnecting with this member next time. After I became an associate pastor, believe me, Name tags saved my life from embarrassment so many times. For sure, name tags are all for hospitality, building relationships, and saving pastors. When I was a visitor, I also loved that our church encouraged putting pronoun stickers on name tags. This small sticker may not seem very important, but it actually delivers a welcoming message that our church affirms any gender one may identify. And more than that, it's a kind of statement, a statement that we stand on the side of our friends and families who sometimes face discrimination because of their gender identities. And it's a statement that we envision a world where we can freely and faithfully be who we truly are as God's beloved creation, instead of being forced to be who we should be. Thinking of name tags and pronoun stickers last week, I came up with a little silly question. What if we made a name tag and picked a pronoun sticker for God? First of all, what must be the name of God? We can find many names of God, main names of God in the Bible. Jehovah, Yahweh, Elohim, God of love and justice, I am who I am, the Good Shepherd, and so on. But if we had to choose only one to make a name tag, what would it be? And what would be God's pronouns? He, him, she, her, or they, them? The honest answer is that we are not sure. We cannot simply fix God's name and pronouns because God is ultimately the holy mystery. God can be all of them, and at the same time, none of them. Last week, I found that one of my uh, pastor friends surrendered his clergy credentials 
in the United Methodist Church. I was not surprised because I knew his position on the ordination of LGBTQ siblings and same-sex marriage. But I was quite sad. He wrote a lengthy Facebook post, and as I was reading through it, I became even more sad. It was to openly criticize the clergy who support full inclusion. He said he certainly knows that we all will eventually stand before the judgment seat of God and receive due punishment for our sins against Him with a capital H. In his writing, I found a certain name tag and pronoun sticker put on God. The name of God on that name tag was the God of judgment, and God's pronouns were he, him. There he spelled who God is in bold with his theological sharpie markers. And he figured out what God is up to with his simple certitude. What bothered me most in his post was not the content, but how he put it. I don't disagree that we can know and say certain things about God. Nevertheless, I don't think we can clearly pin down who God is in our own speculation. And I don't think we can possibly capture the nebulous divine wonder on the ground of human certainty. After reading his post, I needed time to find my peace. I recalled the wisdom of Nicholas of Cusa, a late medieval theologian. He says, if we truly know God, we better leave our way of ignorant knowing and take the way of knowing our own ignorance. Today, we are celebrating Trinity Sunday. People said the Trinity is one of the trickiest theological concepts to explain and understand. And I think it's true. Because the Trinity is the ultimate mystery of God. The doctrine of Trinity proclaims God is simultaneously one God and three persons. If we think about the name tag, it is like this triune God wearing a shifting name tag with a fluid pronoun sticker. The mystery and wonder of the Trinity awaken us to our ignorance and defy our logic and reasoning. However, the good news is that this holy mystery doesn't leave us bewildered or fearful. It doesn't leave us out of touch because the heart of the Trinity is love and relationship. Love and relationship are the ways the triune God communicates with us and lets us know who God truly is. Today's scripture reading from 1 John tells us that we can know God who is love through our actual love, not by tagging God. And today's gospel reading tells us that we live as the people of God through our loving relationship with God and with our neighbors, not by defining God and judging our neighbors. The Trinity is about love. It tells us the story of love. In this story, God has come to find us, not just once or twice, but three times and eternally. God came to create us and renew us, came to lead us to walk the way of salvation, and came to be present within our lives always. This story of God's threefold love, the triple love, teaches us this. Even if we cannot fully know God, we can still know we are beloved no matter what and we can still love God in return. And the Trinity is about relationships. 
It tells us a story of the most intimate relationship we can ever imagine. The love among the three persons is so deep that they can be one, yet this oneness of love doesn't harm the singularity of each person and the diversity in their relationship. This love in God is so abundant that it spills out of God and flows into the creation. And this love calls us into the divine relationship where all of us can abide, be loved just as we are, and be united in our own differences. This story of the divine relationship teaches us this. Even if we cannot fully know God, we can still know we are called by God no matter what. And we still abide in the relationship of God. The story of the Trinity, the story of divine love and relationship is also about us because the story of God's love and relationship is not for anyone else but us and because it is already deeply interwoven in our stories. Even if we cannot fully know how this story unfolds, we can still write this inclusive story with God as we love God and as we love our neighbors. And even if we cannot fully know how this story concludes, we still know we are called to include more people in the divine relationship with the Trion God. I am worried about my friend and many people out there who uphold a patri patriarchal name tag of God with a male pronoun sticker on it, even on this Trinity Sunday. I am worried about their strong certitude reinforced by the normative culture of our days. In the history of Christianity, I see this kind of certitude consecrated as a truth that has become a basis of exclusion and a reason for violence. I see this kind of certitude glorified by the socio-political power that has become a motive for uniformity and effaced diversity. And I see this kind of certitude that has eventually misled people to worship not God, but their idols. Physicist Marcello Glazer tells us about the limits of human knowledge and the ground of our certitude with a beautiful analogy I deeply cherish. He asks us to consider there is the island of knowledge that is the sum total of our accumulated knowledge. And it is surrounded by a vast ocean that is the unexplored ocean of the unknown, hiding countless tantalizing mysteries. And he says, as the island of knowledge grows, so do the shores of our ignorance, the boundary between the known and unknown. In fact, knowing more about God and the world leads us not to a point closer to a final conclusion, but to more questions and mysteries. The more we know, the more exposed we are to our ignorance, and the more we know to ask. Celebrating Trinity Sunday, I hope that all Christians in the world, including us, may check our attitude toward God and look around on which island we stand. And I pray that we all accept the good news of our triune God, the good news of fluid love, the good news of mysterious diversity in unity, the good news of inclusive communion. Today we are reassured that even if we don't know God fully, we can still love God. Even if we don't know our neighbors fully, 
we can still love them. How meaningful it is to kick off Pride Month with this good news of the Trinity. In the end, the core of the Trinity is love. God in three persons is love. Yes, they are. This mysterious love doesn't, doesn't seek to judge or control. Rather, it comes to find us always where we are, includes us in God's story just as we are, and draws each circle wider and wider with us. May this good news of the Trinity, the good news of love and relationship, hold us and empower us today and always. Amen.